Good afternoon. The Belarusian Institute for Strategic Studies in partnership with the Center for Belarusian Solidarity is launching a series of lectures entitled Be Critical, Critical Thinking for Ambitious Belarusians. Today we have a presentation of this lecture series. We're very glad that it's our platform because the course on critical thinking is a logical continuation of work on development of media literacy, which the press club and our project Media IQ have been conducting for several years. We welcome our partners. After all, mastery of critical thinking is essential in reading and evaluating all information and news. Among our speakers today are the course lecturer, Peter Rutkowski, academic director of BIS, philosopher who specialized in argumentation theory and lingua pragmatics as part of his PhD. Hello. Hello. Next is Daiva Panskowskenia, PhD director of the Modern Didactic Center from Vilnius, lecturer at Mykolos Amerius University, Mikhail Drashevich, executive director of Baltic Internet Policy Initiative and co-founder of Digital Skills Coalition in Belarus. Next is Andrei Lavruhin, senior analyst at BIS, one of the developers of the critical thinking curriculum of the National Research University Higher School of Economics from St. Petersburg. Andre is not with us. We're streaming the presentation on YouTube. By the way, if you're watching the presentation on YouTube, please subscribe, like it, and click on the bell not to miss our new videos. I already said that, but I'd also like to remind you that we have the English interpretation. For that, you need to select the appropriate track in the Zoom settings. If you choose Russian, you'll listen to everyone in Belarus and Russian. But if it's English you prefer, you'll listen to all the text in English. We'll have a Q&A after all speakers finish presenting. You can raise your hand or ask questions in the chat. Thank you very much. Now I would like to give floor to Vadim Mazeika. Thank you, Anton. Thank you, everyone, for gathering here with us in our presentation and discussion. I uh, must start by reminding you that Alan Benkowski Kristinova, our analyst colleagues, had a, a KGB visit with the search. We don't know all the details yet and their status, including legal status, and if they achieve what the articles are. But I would like to express my solidarity to Anatol and Valeri. I hope they will be released soon. I hope everything will be fine with them. Unfortunately, that's the situation in Belarus. Um, one of the speakers today is absent because he's helping the family of Valeria Anatoly in this turmoil. This is a very important topic, so I believe it explains what his absence. Still, a um, major weapon of analyst is our wit and uh, so we're not canceling our presentation and uh, hopefully we'll be able to think critically not only as analysts but uh, as regular people in Belarus. This is what this course is dedicated, the course will be presented today. Today We'll have Peter Rutkowski speak first. He's the author of this course. Then next speakers will speak and uh, those of you who 
joined us will be able to participate in the discussion. Piotr Rutkowski, who developed this course, as Anton said, has defended his PhD thesis on argumentation theory. This is not the first educational work dedicated to critical thinking. Earlier, he conducted the relevant trainings at the Wine University and the discussion club in Warsaw at the Lazarsky University for the, this public dispute as well. So, Piotr, the floor is yours. Please tell us about the course you have presented and what we should expect from you. Good afternoon once again. Thank you, Vadim and Anton. Thank you, participants of this event. Those who have joined us, particularly those who are foreign, particularly Daiva Pinkowskini. I will continue in Belarusian. I would like to thank the interpreters for helping us. My presentation will have Belarusian and English inscriptions and words that will simplify our work. What uh, Madim Vajeka mentioned, I mean, the rest of our colleagues, is uh, really shameful. This topic, the critical thinking, I must say that as an expert, because in the expert field, I've been around four years. I don't know if it's a lot or not. Anyway, I would like to note that in many ways, I learned a lot from Valeri, this analytical and critical thinking regarding the civil and political process. Hopefully, there will be positive outcome of all this turmoil that they are facing. What we can do now is express deep solidarity with our colleagues, even though they are not here with us. Now I will start the presentation. I would also like to tell you about the plan, about what this initiative is. It is called the Critical Thinking for Ambitious Belarusians. Right, here's the plan of my presentation. It's quite simple. What, why, and how? What is critical thinking? There are plenty of tens, hundreds of definitions on this. I'm not going to count them or analyze them. I'll tell you what we guide, what are we are guided by during the implementation of our critical thinking implementation. The definition is simple. It is a complex of knowledge and skills at rationally processing information. I would like to recall the video clips made by the Center of Modern Didactics, managed by the Diane Vapentalskeni, who is here with us. There was a warning that critical thinking is not about criticizing, even though the word criti critical is in the name. It's not about criticizing someone. Critical thinking is an instrument. 
a tool. It is a very important tool. However, it's about processing of information in a rational way, where critical approach plays a major role. Examples of skills and knowledge that are discussed. For example, separating the facts, building argumentation strategies, not seeing argumentation fallacies, interpretation of other people's expressions, etc., etc., etc. In other words, it's a rational processing of information. So why does it matter? I will tell you about several spheres. We'll be limited by two spheres, business and politics, even though there are plenty of such spheres where this can be applied. Healthcare, IT, criminal studies, and daily communications are relevant here. But to show the importance of critical thinking in today's world, in 2006, there was a research conducted by the consortium of four important organizations called Are They Really Ready to Work? That was the name of the research. As a result, 400 HR managers of bigger and smaller businesses took part in that. Turned out that critical thinking skills are the most in demand in contemporary business, according to them. And uh, it was more important that create creativity emotional approach. These things are very important, but critical thinking came first. Please note the research conducted in Belarus. Natalia Panasovich, in 2018, she was the Dean of the Business Education of Belarusian State University. Hopefully she works there still because she's a true professional. The research was called Practically Oriented Business Education. In the framework of this research, there was a survey of Belarusian heads of enterprises and business managers. So critical thinking was among top three of most important skills with 11 options available. Hence, it is important in context of what is happening in Belarus right now. There's something like deliberative component of democracy, of civil life, uh, sphere of public debate and discussion of the important state decisions. There's a special field in the democracy theory called deliberative democracy where it is widely covered but there is also an index of deliberative democracy it's hard to size up the deliberative process however there are six parameters the variety of democracy institution is trying to measure the deliberative component of the civil life. Please note that at present, the deliberative component in Belarus is the worst in Europe, along with Turkey. It means that the discussion of uh, the decisions important for the state and the public life. Moreover, Belarus is the worst place here, even compared to Tajikistan. Even in Africa, it's difficult to find a country with the worst index currently. 
this component is uh, actually shown bad results. But, but our role is, is to invest into the future because the new Belarus will come sooner or later. I believe the critical thinking would as a locomotive of deliberative democracy is an investment in the new Belarus. Now, major part of our presentation, how to promote critical thinking in Belarus. I will work, I will talk about our current initiative. Even though we need to discuss the plan for the 15, 20 or 50 years, we should start with something. It's not about us being absolute pioneers while uh, talking with David Pantoskini, she said that yesterday, I mean, in the past, there were important initiatives in this area. Her center cooperated with Belarusians. But what, this is our contribution. It is called the critical thinking of Belarusians. There are, it includes 10 video lectures on critical thinking they need to be practically oriented. The kickoff is today, July 1st, 2021. Each lecture will premiere every Thursday at 7 p.m. Minsk time. The language is Belarusian, translated in Russian using subtitles, and uh, the organization responsible for it is Belarusian Institute of Strategic Studies, as well as partners, Press Club Belarus and Center for Belarusian Solidarity. What are the topics of our lectures? First, how to recognize facts. We'll touch upon this today at 7 p.m. Belarusian time. Next come fakes and anti-fakes. Next is the hate speech through the prism of critical thinking. Fourth comes names, terms, and concepts. Fifth, sixth, and seventh will be about argumentation the basic structure of argumentation, main methodology, evaluation of argumentation. Eighth and ninth will be built upon argumentation fallacies, the imitations of arg argumentation, which are not rational argumentation. The 10th lecture will discuss various cases which uh, I have witnessed over my activity. I created even a subjective rating. In the 10th lecture, I'll share it with my visitors. Be critical and be practical. So be critical means also be important, be practical as well. These were the two things that we were guided by during the preparation and implementation of these lectures. But we'll see if uh, we have been a success. There might be some drawbacks. Anyway, we are betting on the examples. I'll give you a few examples from labs, artificial, but during the lecture, I present, I will present the real examples from real life and real communication. I mean, the public communication. What uh, people talk in private about is not to be discussed in public. Here's what the motives of our initiatives look. And the plan for the next two and a half months. Thank you and be critical. Thank you, Piotr, for 
your comprehensive presentation. Indeed, the critical thinking is important not only for evaluating news, but also for daily activities. Now I would like to give forward to Daiva Pintuski. She has a, a lot of experience working with critical thinking from many sides. She is an author of a number of uh, research articles dedicated to critical thinking. However, she is also a, a participant of a number of YouTube clips on this topic. She's also worked with BIS on critical thinking. I also know that Daiva has cooperated with various Belarus initiatives focusing on critical thinking. Daiva, I wanted to ask you other two questions. A few words now about what Peter said. Could you please tell us um, something about that? And uh, the next, what is best to promote in current world critical thinking? What formats, what ways of doing that? What do you think based on your experience? Would you like me to answer it now uh, to your question? So I, 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 I try to do it. So I, I tried to understand what Petra was saying. So, and I got uh, the main idea of this uh, program and the course on critical thinking that you are going to to deliver uh, and to, uh, to give uh, for, for uh, I understood, quite wide audience to, to attend. So, uh, I, I think that uh, the topics that you have uh, uh, chosen are re really very relevant uh, to, to start talking about the critical thinking, but of course, as I say, always uh, we start from the main concept and from the understanding. So what we call critical thinking, because what is really uh, very strange with this concept of this critical thinking that uh, uh, we uh, it looks like everybody knows what is it, but in fact not. And it is very strange because uh, 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 the attempt to, un to answer to the question, so what is critical thinking is just from the very, very old times coming from the antique times. And still there are so many definitions, understandings, what is it? And it looks like it is a very old discussion going on the topic, but if we do not uh, understand and we do not try from the very beginning to to give very clear definitions, what is critical thinking for me and what is for you and what we give, uh, what kind of meaning we give to the concept. So it's uh, very difficult then to go on further discussions about the topic. So, so in fact, we, when we start, uh, uh, when we start uh, teaching uh, critical thinking, either for school teachers or for university students, or even for the university teachers, we always start from the origins of the concept. We go back to the Greek language, we go back to the concepts and we try to understand what we mean. Uh, because there are so many definitions and there is no one single uh, definition for critical thinking. And there are many competing uh, and even confronting definitions on critical thinking. So why it's very important to, to understand what we're talking about. So it's one thing, it, and it's especially among scientists, among academia, academia, but when we start comparing what academia thinks about what is critical thinking is and what practitioners think, so there is so big gap between those two. Uh, and those two big groups, uh, academia and practitioner. So it's also very important to start looking for the, for the connections uh, and for, uh, looking for the what what is what, what is connecting uh, scientific approach and practical approach what is about and to see and to try and of course to try to find the essence of criticality because uh, sometimes we call critical thinking everything what is good or what is desirable but is not necessary critical thinking so and we see the ten such tendency especially in the science that we call it everything what is needed but when what we're missing, what maybe we're longing for, we call a critical thinking, but it is not, not necessary, it is. 
And uh, the second important thing is to understand that critical thinking is not only skill, but the critical thinking is um, also the disposition and the value, and they are going all together. So it's not possible to, to have it as a pure skill, a pure ability, because it includes also dispositions and values as well. Uh, and starting, uh, uh, I don't know if I can share my short slides. Uh, I try to do it. Uh, can I? No, I can't share. I am not. I am disabled from sharing my slides. Maybe someone can help me and uh, make me co-host. Um. Да, одну секунду, и мы сейчас дадим вам... Just a second, please. We'll give you the rights of the co-host, then you'll be able to share the screen. I'm just saying that if we start talking about what is critical thinking, is, it's very important with what, what, what audience we're inviting and for what audience we're starting talking about. And it depends the content and topics depending on the different audiences, on, on the different contexts, on the different situations. There is no one single way to talk about critical thinking and work with it. So we work with the students, we work with the university and school teachers, and every time we have absolutely different approach how we talk about it. I myself as a university teacher as well, I have a course on critical thinking for many years already. And this course is very different because they have very different students. One way when I talk about critical thinking with law students, another way when I talk with social work students, uh, another way when I'm talking with uh, future teachers. So there are so different approaches. I'm trying just to get, or for example, with uh, students uh, uh, of economy and finances. So I'm trying to, uh, to give the uh, material and the content relevance to each context and to each specific group. Uh, of course, the basic information, what is critical thinking, what is about, you know, and trying to understand what is it. The, the, the whole framework is the same, but the whole material, the whole context always is different. So there is no one single, uh, single similar uh, lecture for, for students. my screen and I will do so uh, I'm just uh, do a very short presentation and go uh, very quickly for my slides and uh, uh, usually how I start for, for example how I start teaching how my t uh, teaching starts from for example I give different uh, 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 statements from from popular media, for example, as you see from the Guardian, from Business News, from different other uh, other famous, uh, well known uh, media uh, press, and I am uh, giving different uh, approaches to critical thinking, and then with, with, I'm asking students to choose one statement, uh, one sentence, which is. Uh, closest to their own understanding, what they understand, what is critical thinking is for them. And then we're trying to discuss what is special about one or another concept, uh, how they are uh, similar or not. So, uh, but all of them start from the experience of, uh, of students, of the audience, giving the floor first to them to express their opinion, what they think critical thinking is about. And then we make groups and discuss, go deeper into different uh, concepts, uh, and we try to find uh, to find different approaches to the critical thinking. And then we try to find also to um, critical thinking in real life situations. Again, we're uh, asking students, uh, uh, what is your approach to critical thinking? But also, uh, uh, if you have met critical thinking in your in real life situations, what those situations were, uh, how how it looked like, uh, what it uh, how how it looked like to experience the critical thinking. If you have not such experience in your practical life, maybe you have read any kind of book or you have any kind of film that associates with critical thinking. And it really helps when we start discussing such things, it really helps to go deeper into the concept. For example, I myself use very, uh, uh, very much different kind of uh, films, documentary and fiction literature and uh, movies. 
and one which is, I think that the 12th Angry Man and Divin Asset uh, by Michal Kov, there's perfect example how we can go through analysis on critical thinking. So there are very different ones, just very few examples, and we go through them and we discuss them and we spend time and try to think how critical thinking manifests either in literature or in, uh, in, in movies. And also we start from this Greeks, as I, as I said, from the Greeks uh, concept, uh, what it what it critical stands for and what is criterion. And we're saying that uh, critical thinking, thinking based, reasoning based on a specific criteria, you have to have certain criteria. And those criteria are uh, skills, dispositions and so on. But also we start very, uh, very often from, from saying not what is critical is about, but what is really not critical thinking, what we do not call critical thinking. And we make reference to uh, uh, Martin Davis, uh, which is saying that not every problem solving is critical thinking, not all decision making is about critical thinking, not all purposeful thinking is also critical thinking, and so on and so on. And we start arguing and going deeper into the concept. So, and also we call what it means, you know, higher level skills, complex thinking skills, if they are really equal to critical thinking or not. So we're going to a very deep analysis of critical thinking. We also do reference to Benjamin Bloom's taxonomy of thinking skills. We also look for dispositions, what it means to be disposed to critical thinking. And we also go to the different analysis of the different authors. Uh, we also call what it means to be disposed in relation to self, how it looks like in relation to others, in relation to world. To world. And we're trying to look for the different examples. And for example, if I give... Uh, 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 give a task for students. If they are law students, I am asking to bring real life example from their studies on from the law life, lawyer's life. If they are economists, I am asking to bring a real life example from the economy life and so on and so on. Uh, and we also discuss different levels of criticality because they are just from the lower to the upper grades. And we discuss, uh, for example, uh, lawyers cases, different kinds of lawyers cases, how it looks like, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, as I said, there are so many concepts, but we uh, came to the agreement that uh, there is at least, we have something stable that we can say about critical thinking concepts. What is what is about? Uh, uh, what is uh, uh, what is uh, the main features of the critical thinking, and so on. Uh, and also, uh, of course, as all lectures, uh, I, I have the favorite one sources to whom I uh, built my my own teaching uh, teaching and learning. And one of this is Ronald Barnett's concept of critical thinking and criticality. So I myself uh, also uh, do research on critical thinking and uh, you, uh, I, am re I am investigating it uh, at different levels and institutional level and, uh, and program level, course level. And also I uh, also re do research on daily teaching level, uh, do, uh, do research on how teachers teach critical thinking or how students learn critical thinking and so on. So uh, and there are different ways to teach critical thinking. You can teach it as a separate subject and uh, a specific or specific approach. So I do it at, at the university the same thing, but also you can integrate it into the different subject teaching and to do it at, as part as your uh, regular regular course. I myself have a, a, a six credits uh, course on critical thinking and uh, students pass exam, they do uh, many independent work tasks. And uh, as I said, the, I have very different, uh, different students. I myself built my learning also called ER framework, a vocation realization of meaning and reflection. I use such a methodological background based on philosophy and methodology of social constructivism and pragmatism. So I'm just not going through those stages, but uh, as I said, we 
do conferences, we, uh, we publish many different uh, publications, articles. We used to publish uh, international journal called Thinking Classroom in Russian language, it was Perimena. So, and we try to bring together different audience to discuss, uh, discuss this critical thinking and uh, to find, uh, to find uh, answer to the questions in different fields, in different subjects, in different contexts. And of course, to find the value of the critical thinking. What is the value of the critical thinking? Is it just a, a very modern uh, uh, affair, uh, modern, uh, a modern uh, task of the modern life? Or is it something that really brings value to each of us? So uh, we have to find answer to this question. So that's all. I'm very sorry for such uh, um, a rush, but I didn't want to take your time. And maybe, um, maybe you have questions. I will try to answer. Uh, thank you very much. We'll have a a q a at the end now i would like to give floor to mikhail Dorashevich, who represents today multiple multiple organizations but he today for us is an executive director of the baltic internet policy initiative and the co-founder of digital skills coalition in belarus among other things, is engaged in promoting critical thinking. He focuses on skills. I really liked uh, one of the Im important thoughts expressed by Daiwa is that the critical thinking is not only about skills, but also about values. I know plenty of people who have similar values to mine, but they don't have enough skills to make these valuable uh, values practical. So, Mikhail, could you reflect on the presentation by Piotr and uh, tell us about your experience? Available at your disposal. Maybe you could tell us about your, some difficulties that you faced and demands. Thank you, Vadim, for very comprehensive and nice introduction. I would like to ask Anton to share some of the graphs. <laughs> Mikhail can, cannot survive without graphs. We know that already. Just a second, please. Unfortunately, I uh, cannot share right today for some reason, so I'll wait when my colleague does that. Okay, you can do it. Now it's available. I'm uh, here on my multiple screens. My screen has been shared already and is probably seen. Since Vadim has put us in a frame, our anxious mood from reading the news should be actually here stifled and we should uh, go back to the definition made by Piotr. I tried to analyze it and uh, I understood that it's actually a definition of the artificial intelligence. If we replace skills with uh, process and procedures, it's very much about uh, the AI. But that's just my introduction for the future discussion. 
I'm a big proponent of various definitions and particular definitions regarding critical thinking. I've selected uh, quotations. I have selected this definition by Bertrand Russell because I believe it covers many points in many sides, many important things that cannot be only regarded as part of the rational processing of information. What Vadim said about our coalition is true. We managed last year to hold uh, several, I can take several research regarding the digital skills and uh, the research conducted in the, in the summer and the autumn last year. It's about digital competences. We discussed the uh, evaluation of uh, attitude towards digital skills. Among the questions we asked uh, people about the possibility of critically evaluating the digital sources of information. The attitude to digital skills is important. It's important to analyze it comprehensively. What we understood based on the age difference of our respondents, that uh, there's basically no significant difference in terms of critical evaluation of the informational sources. It's uh, more or less at the same level. If we take the scale, the maximum scale at five, it uh, requires work with all the groups. The next question, if there is a difference between our capital citizens and the, I mean, capital dwellers and those living in the smaller towns and the rural areas, we see, see here the difference, particularly between uh, settlements of over 50,000 people, but it, it's just 1.5 point difference. As to the demographic characteristics, we see that men believe, I mean, the respondents, that the, they are a little bit better, they are a little bit better at critical thinking, critical evaluation of information sources. As to the slides I've prepared, and if I go back to the course topic, I must say that the topics mentioned by my colleagues, even though the course is very important, boil down to rhetorical argumentation. Rhetorical argumentation is very important, but it's just uh, one of the elements of critical thinking. So uh, maybe we need to, since the course has just started and it can be get upgraded and updated during the summer months, we need to make it wider than just uh, distinguishing between uh, false and true. So that's basically it about uh, the use of digital scales during the pandemic times. We can uh, talk also about that. We have uh, a lot of uh, knowledge, facts, and facts on about this. Well, that's basically it for me. Thank you, Mikhail. Can you tell us about your initiative? And could you also tell us what you have encountered? Was it better or worse than you expected? 
apart from the optimistic assessment of your respondents about the critical thinking skills, what else was there? So, well, it's uh, important that we uh, based on our research on the replies of our respondents. It's hard to say how true they are, but it would be wrong to say, but uh, I cannot make any announcement, but we'll try to research it further. We'll see, hopefully, and understand the changes there will be with every year coming. If we talk about the conversations with regular internet users or netizens, we uh, actually snowed under with information. And this is the information where some basic rules of information sec security are broken, particularly in our country, some the logical filters like the quality work of journalism, journalists dissipated, and we are confronted by the huge number of information pieces from various sources, and we must hear now. The people who are interested in information, in the international fields, they are there their number is the same. We shouldn't expect any growth there. But the source of information have changed and they always require verification. Because we see this avalanche. Every person, internet user, should become a person who can check the information. This is a very important skill for journalists, like critical assessment of the arguments and verification. Now, every internet user needs to be able to do that if they want to use the, make use of the true, truthful information discussed with their colleagues, spread it through using the word of mouth or other ways. And they uh, bear responsibility for the information they consume. That is my vision. I think everybody present here understands what I mean. Thank you once again. What about the future course? Before I give Piotr uh, the floor, I would like to add a question that we have in our chat. Who and how decides on the topics important for the society? Who came up with criteria? So, the floor is yours. Tell us what you think about the question from the chat and what were you think about the previous speakers? What do you think about this? I'll try to speak in Russian with a strong Belarusian accent. It will be easier, I think. As to the questions from Sergey, the first question, I need to clarify if it's the Belarusian society that he means who or any other society in general. Another clarification, what forums, what platforms do you mean? Or at least several 
hundreds of uh, various discussion platforms from Voskesensky to our discussion here in the Zoom. the framework of the expert analytical club it is defined by those who initiate the discussion it's a big mult multitude it's a multitude of discussion platforms so it's uh, not so easy to define and understand who defines what internally I was also suggested was also suggested that I comment on the reflections by the previous speakers. Dr. Pentauskenia and Mr. Darashevich. It was interesting for me to learn about it. It is one of the goals for me during this meeting. to wider underst understand uh, and learn more about the experience of critical thinking, particularly in the educational field. Since Minsk, Ms. Pentos Kenya has a significant experience in that, I was eager to learn how critical thinking is taught in Lithuania. I'm happy to see there's lots of interactive elements in this teaching process. You cannot get uh, this in all the formats. When I did this offline, I uh, conducted trainings on critical thinking. It was easier to implement it in the past in Belarus. In the video lectures, I uh, focus on the practical transfer of skills and uh, tools that have been already tested in the logics field and the communication argumentation theory, the basic toolkit is to be given to those interested to receive it. This is one of the elements. There may be other initiatives with or without our participation where this experience will be used. Mr. Doroshevich shared with us his reflection about definition and topic of this course. As to the definition, Well, I may use the more general terms, but I'm not a proponent of definitions and uh, definition snobism. I was heavily influenced by Karl Popper, who was, uh, who used to criticize the definition method. I'm not as radical as him in this respect. I'm not saying definition is useless but i also believe that that the minimalist definition should be applied and the definition related discussion should be reduced to a minimum anyway in the framework of the course like ours i mean the practice oriented one there's a, a complicated definition would be inept and uh, out of place. Maybe it doesn't cover all the factors, but it does cover the major elements. The fact that uh, it's about processing of information and the, the rational uh, processing of information. Rational in the sense of achieving a certain goal of processing information based on what we have to get conclusions important for us in this situation and uh, when people uh, 
I don't have this toolkit. I'm not particularly sensitive to pseudo argumentations. It hinders the information processing and it's the rational approach here. The, this definition uh, was became a foundation of it. Important element here is argumentation. In the framework of 10 lectures, it is uh, impossible to cover all the topics related to the critical thinking. I had to select just the first three were selected based on the criteria related to the fact to what um, regularly appears in the discourse and narrative related to political crisis and before that. The approach here was to provide a toolkit on the one hand. On the other hand, it was about showing Belarusians that it is something practical, something necessary. That is something that is not taken far away from life. So the facts, opinion, interfakes, hate speech, all these are elements of critical thinking that we'll be discussing. Then goes the bigger block about argumentation. and for the use of some basic notions. These are my reflections about uh, what other speakers said. Thank you, Piotr. Indeed, I would like to read the question in the chat, maybe to accumulate some of them particular question about the future of the critical thinking. Because now, not only in Belarus, but in other countries as well, worldwide, we see processes that when uh, societies are breaking into various segments, information bubbles, when the social feeds become the source of information, prompting people to stay in the comfortable information bubble. We also see the popular, rising popularity of the fake news and the conscious manipulations and propaganda. This propaganda uh, goes, uh, spreads far from the national borders. You don't have to be in the Rus and in Russia to witness that. The EU citizens and Western citizens are also subjected to it. What do you think about the future of critical thinking? What the future holds for it? Do you think it will be more in demand? Do you think it will be in danger? I think we should follow the same order, Ivan Mikhail. I believe that the critical thinking will remain in in demand. It's a lifelong question that needs to be replied and found an answer to. I think it will always be there, but I'm. Uh, uh, afraid of the profanation, profanity, because the critical thinking is not to argue and analyze it, but you need to know a lot, you need to be well informed. And Michael also mentioned that it is very difficult now to deal with a 
huge number of information. Sometimes it's impossible to cover everything. We need to dedicate time to this because time is critical for critical thinking. Critical thinking needs to be given time. We're in a hurry. We need to do this and that. But we need time. We need to have a, a particular environment for critical thinking. We need to have people with whom we can raise questions, issues, and find solutions to them. It's not easy, but I think it needs to be done. And there will be there'll be demand for it at all times. But as I said, I'm uh, afraid of this dissolution. Critical thinking is the key to everything, apparently. But we cannot say though any all the that logical thinking is critical thinking. Logical thinking says that one plus one is two. But critical thinking is important to put in the context. What is happening where it is happening? In one context it could be good, in another context, in another context it will be totally bad. Critical thinking is directed at others. Oh, what about ourselves? What do you think about ourselves? Do we analyze ourselves? It always seems like the entrance point to start with ourselves. Why do I think this way? Why do I behave this way? How do my words and my actions combine? It's not only about critical thinking. If we talk about standards, we need to apply them not only to others, we need to also decide for ourselves and analyze ourselves, first self-analyze. We're all cool these days, very smart, super analyst. We know what is happening in the world. What is happening with me, with my behavior? Not enough attention is paid to this aspect, to self-understanding, metacognition is critical for critical thinking. It is thinking about thinking, about my thinking and perception. What do I think about my behavior? This is particularly important because we make a lot of mistakes. We, when we do not think critically, as Hannah Aron said, critical thinking can save you from bad behavior, if not the world. I really like thought, because if you analyze yourself first, it will be a big step already. That's why we teach people critical thinking. We believe that any person could cri think critically from uh, an early age. Doesn't matter if you have our education, you can learn how to think critically, at least at some point, at some level, and according to certain parameters. I think this is very important. 
important for us to teach others how to do it. This is uh, our mission of some kind. Thank you, Daiva. Indeed, it's very important to direct critical thinking, not only at the news and propagandists, but also at ourselves. I remember what Valeria Chistakova said. She told me that you need to apply these skills to your life first. Indeed, it's important to start with yourself. Mikhail, what do you think about the future of critical thinking? How do you think the demand for critical thinking will transform? I'm very grateful to Daiba for her words. I'd like to continue this line of thought with uh, the words of William Parrish. That is uh, a level of uh, development. What uh, Jerome Bruner said is also important. He said new ideas are based on the previous experience. The solution very much depends on the previous experience of the person. It all very much in line to what Diva said. If we talk about our future, become futurist. Well, since I started with the AI, I think I should go back to it now because it's becoming more and more difficult to understand what is happening in the current world technologically. I mean, not simply due to information. I'm, uh, I have a technical background, among others. Sometimes you cannot say that this thing is 100% wrong. But I mean, by technological development, I mean what starts with people when people don't know something. They use technology. There. I mean, deep fakes. If we look at it from the point of view of us, it's like a never ending race. Because in order to understand the real world, we need to use a more sophisticated toolkit, spend more time and investments with different research. And the toolkits that allow us to analyze the content is uh, quite expensive. Or we may encounter a problem, particularly when the the scientific research is not the major focus. We may face the problem when more developed countries will have a more developed toolkit, of ways of preventing spreading of the fakes and uh, educating the people. I mean, lifelong education. And the countries with uh, lower income with lower spendings on research, they may encounter the issue of fake information. Of course, it will have its effect. We've seen, we've seen its effect on major countries. Undoubtedly, it may affect the countries of the middle and lower income because people will not be educated, research will not be done. I would say I would say the major problem is here because from the point of view of technology, 
I mean, the technology is developing really fast. The technology that would develop in the way we want them to develop, they're expensive. So we need to come up with a toolkit of our own and use the some tools that are at our disposal, not some guesses. I have a suggestion for Mikhail, because Martin Heidegger, philosopher, has said it before, and other scientists as well. In more developed countries, critical thinking is not developed because they are, they live so well that they are actually tired of thinking too much. And there the critical thinking may fail. It, it is shows better in the, the critical thinking, I mean, in the issues that are really important for you. This is existential question you have to answer to. Only then the people start to think more, truly think. Otherwise they don't think they are floating, they are sailing along the river of life in their daily routine and they're not thinking properly. This is a paradox which has been described a long, a long time ago. When you have everything, you're not thinking, you're just going with the flow. Well, I have a counter argument to this because my thought was not about consumerism as such, but about uh, the research pool. But you have more opportunities to conduct research and educate people. When people don't have such, a, have such opportunities, not only people face this problem, but intellectual elite does as well. When it's not well educated, prepared, it's uh, wrong to expect that it will take care of its citizens. I agree, but please read Brazilian philosopher and educator, Freer. He prepared a special curriculum for educating people writing. They couldn't uh, write, but uh, the way where they thought was utterly sophisticated. I worked in Africa, in Bosnia, and I worked three years in Belarus. This level of thinking I haven't come across it in well-developed countries. But this paradox exists. I know what, what you mean by saying that education is important. But there's no such, a, there's no single algorithm. People think that, feel that was a uh, quite a while they start thinking better 
then you live in a total freedom and you have everything what you have and everything what you need and you do not know what to wish for else. Uh, so, so in this situation, you are not linked to think deeply and critically because critical thinking, you, uh, you are thinking about existential questions you have to answer to and that usually you have no answer to. You have to disclose those questions. There are no simple answers to the questions uh, for critical thinking. They are just uh, not simple daily questions. So, sorry. Uh, I believe we started the discussion that could be of a little interest to others. I'm sorry for that. It is undoubtedly a very important discussion. I want to uh, add to what Taiba said, since the world has found itself in the pandemic world, pandemic situation, when everyone is facing the a lack of stability. People are facing various growth of fake information. We must think that, of course, critical thinking sometimes gives a better result in low-income countries compared to high-income countries. But it doesn't mean that uh, low-income countries shouldn't strive for higher income and higher level of education. Indeed, uh, everyone is facing new challenges. We uh, understand, however, why the Danish young man is not facing challenges that the Belarusian young man is facing. I'm very glad that we have been a live discussion. I remember when we have the discussion offline during the medical cup meetings. I uh, would usually say that let's continue discussion drinking wine, but for now it's not possible. Now I would like to give floor to Petr Rutkovsky for some thoughts of his own in order to finalize everything. I want to answer the direct question. Go back to the question from Sergey. It was about the rating that I quoted. It was the uh, brightest democracy rating that I quoted. He's interested on the, the information that became the basis for Belarus and for Belarusian place. It was not about the topics, but the ways of public use of arguments and creating of discussion for the important for the decision support for the state. The parameters that are assessed and considered during this rating production are the following. How much the political elites explain their positions regarding the state policies, how they explain their positions from the public good, how much they respect at the consultations at the public level. All these parameters are considered. Each of them is uh, quite soft, but to avoid the bias, not to avoid, but to mitigate. It's almost impossible to avoid it. Five experts from different 
countries. They are following the discourse in the public space. Usually the focus is made on public and state related decisions. What are the reactions to counter arguments? How much the public good documentation is used here? And others. As to the other issues, the discussion there is quite uh, ample. It's uh, philosophical in its nature. My approach to critical thinking is uh, more modest here. First and foremost, it's the work on toolkit. To uh, update our argumentation, argumentation approaches. Here, I uh, like to mention the small units. the beginning and the end. I'm very critical about the position of critical thinking as a tool of solving global issues. I like the situation when people start to or stop thinking when they have too much freedom. when they live in uncomfortable and low income conditions. Maybe so, maybe not, but the society is not a simple organism. So it's not so easy to come up with the simple solutions. I don't share other approach over maximization, maximization of knowledge in a sense that wider knowledge, wider knowledge is a prerequisite for critical thinking. In some way, it's the other way around. I would say the critical thinking is something that allows to save energy and uh, in order to not spend much energy for information processing. It's the reply to the question, how using the minimal amount of information to get the best benefits. As of today, there are about one, 130 millions of books, of a billion of websites. This information flow is endless. The attempt to process one or one and a half percent is unrealistic and is actually useless. We should here focus on to process the information we have. The knowledge is very important and so is the information, but we should draw the best available benefits using the minimal information we have. It's not a particularly romantic function of the critical thinking, but poetry is something else is more suitable for rom rom romantic approaches. For me, critical thinking is rather a field for acquiring practicing of strict toolkit. It's not the same as the formal logic, but 
something similar to logic where strict rules exist and many rules for processing information. It has a practical meaning both in business and and in political deliberation, and many other spheres. I've shared with you my vision of the meaning of critical thinking. Thank you, Piotr. In, in the end, I would like to ask other participants, maybe they would like to add something. If everyone has said everything they wanted, I would like to thank once again all the participants of our presentation and discussion. Undoubtedly, critical thinking, as was shown by different graphs by Piotr, is a very important skill in today's world and will remain relevant in the future. There will be plenty of challenges. I don't think we'll be able to cover all the challenges in, the, in this lecture, but we are starting it. For those who take this course, they will be able to use their new skills in the research activities or in their daily lives. We should think further and particularly about the new set of lectures in the future. Thank you very much, Piotr and all the participants. I'd like to thank everyone who supports critical thinking, who strives for conscious procession of information. Thank you and all the best. Thank you and all the best to your project. Thank you. All the best.